Um, so good morning and thank you all for coming. My name is Emma Wright. I am a senior at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities and the board chair of the Minnesota Public Interest Research Group, better known as MPERG. MPERG is a statewide student-directed nonprofit that works with students on seven college campuses to be effective participants on key public policy issues they care about. We are present at Augsburg College, McAllister, Hamlin, St. Catharines University, and the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, Morris, and Duluth. We are here today to express our concern about a pressing social issue, the student debt crisis. Today we are wearing red as a symbol of the debt we all bear as we graduate from our respective colleges and universities. And as you can see behind me over here, we have our great wall of student debt which puts faces to the numbers. The debt issue is particularly acute in Minnesota where we have the dubious distinction of being the third highest student debt average in the entire country at a whopping $29,793. Student loan debt has now surpassed credit card debt as the greatest source of indebtedness. What you will see hear today are the stories of student debt, as expressed through the debt yearbook we are releasing to the media and legislators, and the burden this puts on our future leaders. We are here to do more than just talk about the problem. We are here to do something about it. We will conclude with an overview of Opportunity Minnesota, or Senate File 997, House File 1097, an innovative policy that, will bo that both relieves student debt and incentivizes students to pursue a higher education. So let's hear first from Matt Fredericks, a junior at the University of Minnesota, Morris. Thanks, Emma. Uh, my name is Matt Fredericks. As you heard, I'm a junior from the University of Minnesota Morris, and I have student debt. I'm here today to tell you that living in rural America might be cheaper to live in than urban areas, but going to school there is not. Students in Morris face the same issues with de uh, student debt, just like students in the metro area do. The rising costs of education in Minnesota are crippling the ability for rural students to be able to attend a public four-year university. When we say the word public, it usually refers to a level of success or access that can be attained by anyone from the general public as it is a public good. We have created something that is public into something that is only attainable by those who can afford it and those who are willing to saddle the debt of an underfunded public good. Because of the amount of debt we saw at Morris, an idea for a debt yearbook was created a few years back in order to show the varying degrees of debt and the various types of people who have debt. Looking through the yearbook, you will see that the debt is present across all majors, students from all communities, and all walks of life. Debt does not discriminate. It plagues almost every student in Minnesota. Higher education is unctuous right now in that they tell us if we get a degree, we will be able to be productive members of society. While that might be a reality for some people, our growth is stalled by the amount of debt and it also turns away many capable people from going uh, to school or finishing their degrees. We believe in a free market system and the American dream, one that costs nothing to get involved with our economy. With the rising cost of education, we now made an admission cost to get into our economy. We are charging an individual to participate in something that improves the public good. This is against the very values of America and what being a Minnesotan means. Pass Opportunity Minnesota and provide the opportunity to our students to give back to their society. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. And now we'll hear from Sarah Nispol, a senior at McAllister College. Public school or private, student debt is steep. My name is Sarah Nispol. I'm a sophomore at McAllister College. I'm here today not for myself, as I come from an affluent family, but for my best friend who can't be here. My best friend was one of my primary influences in getting involved with MPERG and economic justice in Minnesota. It's amazing to see the way she builds community in the Twin Cities um, 
and, but she is heavily burdened by student debt. She nearly had to drop out of school on more than one occasion, and she has been taking four credit internships rather than classes to decrease her tuition costs. She is very close to her parents, but for a period of a few months she avoided calling them because she was afraid their money struggles might come up. Financing her, her education with as few loans as possible put a huge stress on her family, which made her feel so anxious and guilty that some nights she could not focus on her homework or even her work in the community which she loved. It was heartbreaking for me to see her in tears after conversations with her folks, or so stressed that she became physically ill. She frequently feels bad about going out to eat or going to a movie on weekends because of the financial and emotional strain her college education is putting on her family. And she hasn't even begun to pay off her loans yet. She is a talented, kind, and passionate organizer, and I'm afraid that in her quest to find a job with a salary high enough to pay off her loans, she will have to sacrifice working with a nonprofit or a community organization to improve the lives of Minnesotans. This would be a devastating loss both to her and to our state. Today I'm asking our legislators not to let that happen. Help ease the mental and emotional anguish caused by the undue financial burden of student debt. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Now let's hear from Representative Dorholt. Uh, thanks for coming out. Uh, thanks for bearing this burden in the name of higher education. I'm Zachary Dorholt, state representative from 14B in St. Cloud, Minnesota, where I home to the largest Minsky school, St. Cloud State University, where I wrote a check for tuition in 1999 for 1200 bucks. Uh, by the time I had graduated, that price had doubled. Um, you look up at these these numbers here from four-year degrees, and you ask yourself, well, what about the folks who want to go on for master's or doctorate, and people aren't because of this. Um, every word I heard in high school was, all I got to do is get into college, you know, and, and everything will be great. Um, as we're learning now, it's, it's sure, we have a great education in a state that's known as, as what put us on the map, um, but these things are holding us back. Uh, the national level, you hear, you've heard a lot about the housing bubble. Uh, if you start looking at these numbers, we might be concerned about the student loan debt bubble. Uh, that might be the next one we face here. Um, as vice chair of higher ed, I've got to hear a lot about, a lot of questions. What can we do? What can we do about the cost of college? And what we're learning is some hard truths that it, there's, there isn't as much as we would like to do, isn't available to keep those costs down. The costs aren't going to go away. Um, so this is one thing, one tool that will help relieve one of the top burdens we have um, here in Minnesota for everyone in this room, for the folks in high school who want to go to college, for everyone who's hearing those, you got to go to college to get a good job. Um, this is one tool um, that we can move Minnesota forward with and help ease one of the an unnecessary burden if we're going to keep Minnesota uh, human capital as our number one um, priority because it is our number one asset and I would hate to see us lose that uh, just because we can't do anything to help students um, keep this problem at bay so thank you for the support and uh, keep keep talking thank you representative Dorhold. Uh, now let's hear from Heather Johnson a senior at North High School My name is Heather Johnson and I am a senior at North High School in North St. Paul. I am here today in support of Opportunity Minnesota. I am considering the U of M Twin Cities as well as other institutions across the country as I look towards my graduation in May. But my education will not stop after a bachelor's degree. My current career path is to pursue biological sciences and continue my education into the medical field. It's daunting to think about the enormous pile of debt I will have incurred after pursuing further education into a master's degree and eventually a PhD. This policy would be an incredible incentive for choosing to stay in Minnesota after obtaining my degrees. I am the youngest of three daughters in my family and have not yet started my college education, and my parents have already incurred over $40,000 in college debt. This is an enormous burden for my family to bear, and it is only getting bigger. My family is in the fortunate position of being able to take on this debt. However, I can say the same is not true for many of my peers, whom are choosing to forego a higher education for employment straight out of high school. 
My parents, as they graduated college, had little to no debt. The same is certainly not true for my generation. I want to stay and live in this state both for my education and future employment. I understand the cost of higher education is not going to go away, but the effects of this bill could help me achieve my academic goals while allowing me to stay in the state that I love. I want this not only for myself, but for my peers and future high school graduates. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Uh, now let's hear from Vincent Toulouse, also a senior at North High School. My name is Vincent Toulouse, and I'm also a senior at North High School in North St. Paul. I'm also here today to test, uh, testify in support of Opportunity Minnesota. I'm one of the peers that Heather just spoke about, and I'm considering not going to college due to the overwhelming debt. Higher education debt is a huge barrier for all students, and I'm certainly no exception. I already have two sisters that have graduated with an enormous debt, one of which owes $24,000 alone in her undergraduate year. My family is a middle class family that already has a hard enough time providing for us as is, which means that if I were to go to college, I would certainly have to take out a loan in order to do so. My parents are hard workers and immigrants to this country. They never had the opportunity that I have to get an American education. I want to take that opportunity that they never had, but at the same time, there are other opportunities that wouldn't burden me with this debt. The cost and debt of a higher education is a real barrier for me in considering any other paths. If this bill were to pass, I can tell you it would directly influence my decision to get a college degree. I would go to college, and I urge the Minnesota legislator to pass Opportunity Minnesota for myself and all those like me who wish to pursue their dreams. Thank you, Vincent. Um, and now we'll hear from Brian Daly Arndt, a junior at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Thank you, Emma. All right, now there are several uh, ways to address the issue of higher education debt. To be sure, we need to return to the commitment in state statute 135A01, adhere to the two thirds investment from the Minnesota, from the state of Minnesota for our public institutions that provide access to an affordable higher education and buy down tuition. But as you've heard, <clears throat> we are facing a challenge that is much direr and requires innovative solutions. Opportunity Minnesota, Senate File 997 and House File 1097 is the innovative solution to this challenge. It provides higher education debt relief and is at the same time a workforce development tool. It is, evidence, <clears throat> it is evidenced by the report we are releasing today and the personal stories of the high school students before us Policies like Opportunity Minnesota have proven to increase college enrollment, particularly for low- and middle-income students, and build an educated workforce that can drive the economy less hindered by debt. So how does Opportunity Minnesota work? Opportunity Minnesota provides a tax credit for student debt payments made during the prior year. Any individual with debt from federal student loans is eligible to claim the credit as long as they graduate from a higher education institution in Minnesota and work in the state following graduation. Employers who offer debt payment assistance as a benefit of employment are also able to claim those payments as a tax deduction. The total credit allowed is limited each year to the lesser of the principal and interest payments uh, made in the prior year, or $4,000, and can be claimed for no more than 10 years. The credit is also targeted to benefit those who need it most. As income goes up, the amount the credit an individual can claim goes down. In the report we are releasing today, called Opportunity Minnesota uh, and Economic Analysis, we can, uh, was conducted by applied economist at the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities, named Elton Mikarezi. His analysis indicates that there are $800,000, uh, $847,133 in social benefits and $123,865 in fiscal benefits to the state of Minnesota as a result of inducing just one high school student to attain a degree. That's a total of a nearly a million dollars in benefits per student. This is a critically important aspect of this policy. Uh, while we recognize that this program has upfront costs, the analysis indicates that it will pay for itself if we can induce just 2% of high school students, high school graduates, or 12% of the college cohort each year to attain a higher education. The inducement required for Opportunity Minnesota to offset the fiscal costs to the state 
is feasible according to the existing studies and economic literature on higher education debt re reduction programs. One of the clear advantages of this policy approach is that it rewards those who graduate and then stay in Minnesota to contribute to our workforce. In that way, it is a merit-based tax cut provided to the newest members of the middle class as they achieve a higher education. This afternoon at 3 p.m., the bill gets a, its first hearing in the Senate Higher Education Committee um, where we will hear from more students about their stories of student debt, hear again from those amazing high school students on the barriers of the cost of college of higher education imposes on our state's future leaders, and, and hear directly from Elton Mikareji as he expounds upon the economics analysis he's conducted. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brian. Now let's hear from Senator Clausen. Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here with you today to speak in support of uh, Senate File 997, Education Opportunity Credit. And as a member of the Senate Higher Education Committee, uh, we have heard from Minsky, we've heard from the University of Minnesota, we've heard from private colleges, we've heard from uh, for-profit colleges, and I've heard from many of the students that are uh, here today in my office about the high costs of tuition and what the state of Minnesota can, can do about that. The one thing that, you know, has been stated here is, is the high uh, loan rates that people are graduating from college. It's around $30,000 on average here in the state of Minnesota. And yet we also have people that are graduating uh, from professional schools in our state where it's well over $100,000 that they owe. And that's a real problem. Uh, we have the fifth largest percentage of graduates carrying student loan debt in the nation. That's 71% of our four-year graduates. And the other issue that's very concerning is across the nation, student loans are now over $1 trillion that are owed to federal agencies. And we have a problem in that within two years, about 10% of the students are defaulting on their loans. They can't pay those loans and at the same time, <clears throat> excuse me, um, buy homes and do the other things that's so important as you, you move into adulthood. And I believe we need to send a message that higher education is a good investment, and as a state, we are willing to help students to guarantee their future and the future of our state. It's really an investment in the future and will ultimately determine the quality of life that we'll have here in the state of Minnesota. Senate File 997 will allow post-secondary graduates to purchase homes, to make investments on their own for their future, and also to purchase more items in the marketplace, resulting in increased economic activity. So uh, again, it's a pleasure to be here uh, this morning, and I'm looking forward to this afternoon when uh, we will be presenting to the Higher Education Committee. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Senator Clausen, and thank you again for all of your work on this issue. Um, so, and for everybody else, thank you for, com for uh, coming today. We would be happy to take any questions you might have. Um, but before we do, I do want to let the members of the media know that we will have sto students here who would be happy to talk directly to you about their debt stories. Um, we will also welcome you at 3 p.m. In, in the Senate Higher Education Committee as the bill gets its first hearing of the session. Uh, as Brian noted, uh, Elton Mikarezi will be present to testify and or to answer any question you might have about the economic analysis we conducted. Thank you so much. Any questions? Do you want to hit that? Oh. So Josh Winter is executive director of the Minnesota Public Interest Research Group. Uh, we don't have a fiscal note for it yet, uh, is, is the cleanest answer I can give you. We expect that we'll see that. Um, to be sure, there will be uh, a cost, an upfront cost for this policy. Um, I think that's the reason we uh, conducted the economic analysis we did, though, because the core question for us is, we know it was, was going to cost money to start with. The question is, how do we pay back that investment? Uh, and it's one of the reasons we're really highlighting uh, that piece of, uh, you know, in releasing the report today is that 
even if there is an upfront cost, uh, this inducement, and, and the, by the way, the analysis is predicated on the total amount of debt that was anticipa uh, anticipated for a 2011 cohort. So that was total debt. The actual burden itself will be lower than that. So even when we say we get a 2% inducement in high school students to offset that cost uh, or that, yeah, that upfront fiscal cost, um, it's probably even less than that, uh, given what – this credit is pretty darn targeted when you look at the language, so it's going to be even less than that. Great question. More to come as we get the fiscal note and Senate House research on what the total cost of the package will be. And just wanted to make sure I understood how it works. It's based on the principal of the student debt paid in a preceding year. Is that right? That's, That's correct. correct. And you claim that credit, yep, then when you file your taxes. And interest. Principal and interest. And interest, yep. Well, if there are no more questions, thank you so much for being here today, and I hope to see everybody at 3 o'clock. That's all we got. <laughs>